What do you think lets athletes down? Gosh, so many things. Um, I think sometimes they think they're more important than they are, you know. Um, I was always very... Well, it's funny, I mean, my, when I was growing up, Dad was, um, you know, one of the sort of CEOs at Nike. So I spent a lot of my time looking up to athletes and seeing athletes rock up to Nike and get gear and leave. And, and um, Dad would always explain to me how you had to look after your sponsors and how you had to, you know, you were always, even though equipment's free, it should always look brand new, you should always look after things. And, um, you know, I used to be given all my equipment, but it was always spotless, always clean. Um, I think a lot of athletes get sloppy. Um, and I don't know. I suppose a lot of a lot of athletes don't realise that their career is very limited. So once you know, if you do if you do make some money, it's a very limited time. So do do something wise with it. Mm. So I was fortunate. That I sort of did all those things. Yep. What What's a great coach to you? To me, what, what what kind of attributes does a great coach have in your mind? So I had, um, I think a great coach is someone who nurtures, doesn't, doesn't sort of, well, I mean, I'm not the kind of person that needs motivation to train. Mm. So if someone, if I had, if I had a very aggressive um, coach that believed in lots of mileage, that would destroy me. But then again, if I had a coach that was too soft, that would drive me nuts. So a coach needs to know their athlete, what type of person the athlete is and provide guidance without being too sort of restrictive as well. Because there's times when you're going to be overseas or you're going to be wherever, your coach isn't around and you've got to work, work out what to do. Mm-hmm. So a coach has to, has to teach you how to stand on your own two feet. And um, it's always good to have a few little stories in there when you're training. <laughs> so a coach with a few stories when you're running, riding. As in just to keep your mind occupied? Just stories about, um, I suppose some of my best coaches were athletes themselves yeah. and you can hear you know, the stories that they went through and things like that. And um, you've got to have a sense of humour out there. And um, I think you've got to be able to laugh at yourself because you know, putting your body through that every day, mm. if you can't laugh at yourself or take some time out and just look at what you're doing to yourself, You'd go nuts. Tell me about, I mean, you've been through so many things with regards to your body, your physicalness over your lifetime. And you've obviously had a large amount of injuries. You've experienced the heart problem that you have. And now you've given birth to a a baby son, Jack. Mm. What is, like, how do you view your body now that it's been through all that stuff? What do you think of it? I don't know, I was trying to work out the other day if um, you're born with a certain number of beats in your heart. I reckon I must be pretty close to kicking the bucket. Um, It's a pretty amazing thing, the body. You know, it's fortunately for me, pregnancy was pretty much very simple. Didn't really show. um, And labour was fairly easy, but I did go top top level drugs (laughs) because there was no post event drug testing. Um, yeah, it's, the body is amazing. It's, um, it's also something you've got to really look after because, I mean, I've, I've seen my sister die mm. and it wasn't her mind that went, it was her body. And, um, you know, I've now, my mum now has um, become very organic, very healthy, very, um, probably very much like me, very obsessed She's gone down that path and um, I think my mum will live to about 150, the way she's going. So um, the body is is amazing, but it's only as amazing as you'll let it. Good point. What do you think you still need to get better at? Um, I'm still very impatient. And outside of training, I'm probably not very (laughs) organised. You know, just 
actually, being an athlete does not, does not really hold you in very good stead for day-to-day -day life. How so? Well, when you're an athlete, you can be doing 40k an hour on your bike and you can yell out, get out of the way, and yeah. everyone will get out of the way. Yeah, right. You can't do that in real life. No, unfortunately not. <laughs> no. You, um, you know, you have to queue, you have to be civil. There's so many things that you do as an athlete which in real life is really not, not good. Yeah. So um, it does take a while to adjust. But I think, you know, in the other way though, I, um, my career was sort of cut with me going in and out of hospital and then I was faced with Jane. So there was probably a lot of extra anger in there. Mm. Disappointment, anger, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, now I'm a mum. To be mature. <laughs> how do you work with that anger in a positive way? Like how do you sort of work well, through you just, it? I think he's mellow. You know, you're not you're not trying to be the fastest in the world anymore. I mean, I still ride my bike with friends and still go for runs and still swim very badly. But um, I just have to sort of not not expect anything of it. I'm just catching up with friends now. Mm. Yeah. How do you pace yourself? Um, well, I thought I was quite good at it, but I set my defibrillator off the other day, so now I'm actually wearing heart rate monitors. Right, all the time. Yeah. Well, not all the time, but yeah, when I when I exercise. Right. Yeah. To keep check of how you're going. Because I don't, I don't like the way my cardiologist looks at me over his glasses. Right. <laughs> what, what do you actually need to get to in order to go, no, I need to slow down? I, I'm not supposed to get my heart rate above 150. Yeah. It starts monitoring. 150? Yeah, 160 it starts monitoring things. Um, What's your max? Well, when I, was ex when I was racing about 176. Yeah. So I think my, I think my cardiologist may disagree. My problem was... My heart rate max was there and I could sort of race just below it. Mm -hmm. So I was always putting my heart under extreme strain. Mm. But, um, yeah, so I have to be careful. I have to keep it below 150, give myself 10 beats leeway. <laughs> Otherwise I'll get a whack. <laughs>